I do not condone the use of any legal or illegal substances. This video is strictly made for educational and harm reduction purposes only. Also note that psychedelics are not necessary to achieve a higher level of consciousness. Achieving higher states of consciousness permanently can only be done sober. But for the ones experienced with psychedelics, they can be tools to help you on your journey if done properly. In this video, I will explain to you the following things. First, I will explain to you my experience of achieving a higher state of consciousness using the psychedelic psilocybin truffles. Then you will know what a higher state of consciousness implies when you use a psychedelic. Then I will tell you the hundred ways this can go wrong if you just randomly stick some psychoactive substances in your mouth without the proper preparation. And after that, I will actually explain to you how to achieve a higher state of consciousness using psychedelics. But first, listen to me very carefully. Never ever take a psychedelic because you feel bad. Don't take a psychedelic if you have stress, depression, anxiety, or other kinds of negative mental ways of experience. Because a psychedelic won't solve these problems. They will only show you your problems in a very intense and sometimes terrifying way. So unless you are ready to deal with those negative things about you and deal with emotions that come with them, don't take a psychedelic. Well, unless you are participating in a medical research project which researches the benefits of psychedelics because then you will be guided by professionals in a controlled environment instead of by a random guy on the internet. Also, if you don't have experience with meditation or spirituality and you don't know nothing about your own psyche, you don't know nothing about uh, what the ego is, what your authentic voice is, how emotions and certain thoughts work, you don't know nothing about the mind, then also don't take psychedelics because then the psychedelic experience will just be for you. <laughs> also, if you don't have enough experience with psychoactive substances, then I recommend you skip this video because they can fuck up your psyche in multiple ways. And you want to know what you take first. You want to know how your body responds to the substance before you work with it. There are multiple psychedelics that can bring you into a state of higher consciousness. Preferably entheogens. And for if you don't know, entheogens are psychoactive substances which naturally occur in nature, in plants, in fungi and in animals. Today I will talk about my experience with psilocybin truffles. Oh yes, hello! For if you don't know, psilocybin truffles contain the same exact psychoactive substances as magic mushrooms. The only difference is that truffles grow on the ground and mushrooms above. And the amazing thing for me is that it is just a 20 minute drive from my house to a shop that sells the truffles. If you are an experienced psychonaut, then I highly recommend you check out the link in the description to my website because the main menu of the website, the homepage, tells you some interesting information about truffles. You might like what you see. Cheerio! So I don't have to go to the heart of a dark alley to buy mushrooms from a guy who smells like crack. I prefer the psychedelic magic mushrooms or magic truffles because they have the most profound effects on me. But if you have more experience with LSD or another substance, then, then go ahead. With that out of the way, I will now tell you my story about my last experience that brought me into a higher state of consciousness. I took a solo dose and during the come up stage I wanted to watch something beautiful and astonishing on Netflix rather than meditating and watching my thoughts like Terence McKenna always used to do. So I took 15 grams of fresh psilocybin truffles which equals to 3 grams of dried magic mushrooms. So after, the, after I took my dose, I went to watch Netflix and I saw this documentary, Our Planet, with the presenter with the most soothing voice ever for a documentary, David Attenborough. If you haven't watched that, please watch it. And I got lost in the beauty of nature. <laughs> then when I felt the actual effects coming up, I started to get up from my couch and walk a little bit across my living room. And then... I noticed that I was getting into a state of higher consciousness because I got profound realizations. One interesting one that I remember was that um, during the day 
or during life, we absorb all kinds of information during our senses. And I realized, hey, I always think about those things. I always think about the information I absorb. I always think about the information I absorb through television, through watching videos, through watching books. And then I started to realize, hey, but if I do this, then other people do this too. So the main thing that I realized here was that if you know what other people absorb for kind of information, you know what they think about the majority of the times. And then I got more realizations and more and more and more. So that was a good sign of knowing that I was going in towards the states of higher consciousness. So knowing that I was going in the good direction made me more excited and more excited and made me more feel good and feel good and blah 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 blah. blah. Then I thought it was time to get into the full Terence McKenna experience by sitting in total darkness, in silence, with my legs and crossed and my eyes closed. And so I was entering the psychedelic realm. By the way, if you have never sat down and closed your eyes whilst, a psyched whilst you experience a psychedelic, then you haven't experienced the full power of that substance you took because most of the times you were hanging out with friends and you took it and then you were doing something fun but you were always distracted from the actual effects and if you sit down and if you look at it you see what power a certain substance really has so if you are going to take a substance all by yourself alone in darkness make sure you know the substance otherwise this can be pretty terrifying for you so when I closed my eyes, a whole new world became available. You know, when you look into the sun and you close your eyes, you see like this dot, this two dimensional dot of, uh, of light. The things that I saw were nothing like that. It was not a two dimensional picture. It was like fully 3D psychedelic patterns and uh, faces and colors and patterns. And they were all I can't explain it, but it was a really new world when I closed my eyes and I just looked like this. It became so intense that I forgot that I was in my own living room. This whole world became available to me because I closed my eyes and I simply just looked around and it was like um, I could see full depth. So there was, uh, for example, an elephant or something and you see it there. You don't see it right to the in front of your eyes, you see it right over there. And then there was something closer and it was all twisting. So I didn't even know that I was in my living room because I was so distracted of this experience that I was experiencing. In this stage, I just observed how beautiful it was and just observed the euphoria and good feelings it gave me. And then the interesting part came. As the effects were starting to come down a little and the patterns were just disappearing a little, I started to become more focused on my psyche. I started to become more focused on my mind. Then I experienced the higher state of consciousness I was looking for. And I'm gonna try to translate my experience to the English language. But if you have ever tried to explain your psychedelic experience to a friend of yours, then you know how limited the English language is when you try to explain an experience. You can't even come close to explaining what you experienced. But I can try. In regular day life, we experience a consciousness that makes you aware of certain thoughts that you think, but you are not aware of the psychological structure behind those thoughts and why these thoughts appear. You can get angry at a person because he did a certain nasty thing to you, and you can think that it is because of him that you got mad, but you don't have the right amount of consciousness to see that you got mad not because of him, but because you chose to be mad. So you don't see the actual reason why you got mad at someone. You don't see clearly why you did a certain thing in regular day life for most people. And the same thing goes for depression and stress and anxiety and other kinds of mental negative ways of experience. You can try to solve your stress for a hundred years and still won't succeed because you are in a vicious cycle of not knowing your own psyche. You may drink an extra cup of coffee. You may take a vacation. You may smoke an extra cigarette. And this will reduce your stress a little bit. But if you get back into the work environment, 
you may blame the work for getting you stressed. It is the work because I'm stressed. It is school and the lots of homework and the people I need to deal with because I'm stressed. This is simply not the case. The only way to get rid of psychological illnesses is to understand your own psychology, to look at your psychological structure from above, from a higher state of consciousness and see what is actually happening there and not trying to just numb the symptoms of stress, depression and anxiety. You take the problem by its source because you understand why it is happening and now you see that in this work environment where you were usually stressed, you can, you can handle everything easily. Why? Because you understand this. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that all of the people, every single one of them, with stress, with depression, anxiety or other mental illnesses, they all originate from one source. They don't know how it works in here. They don't know their psychology. They can't look at their psychology from a higher perspective. So they don't know what's happening there. So, so they're just trying to numb all of the symptoms down with, with drugs, with alcohol, with television, with uh, jumping from boyfriend to boyfriend or from girlfriend to girlfriend and trying to obtain happiness from the outside just to numb all of the problems they have in here. How do I know this? Because I experienced it myself. I was very shy and very introvert and now I am exuberant and I can express myself and do this and that without shame. Why? Because I understand this. But of course I am also still learning. I am not perfect. Every day I try to be uh, a better person than I was yesterday. So as my experience was coming down a little bit and I got into the state of higher consciousness and I was looking down at my psychology I saw why I felt certain things I saw why I felt certain emotions certain feelings I saw why I thought certain thoughts it was like my perspective was just risen up to there and I was able to look down at everything that was happening in me in a very clear way and I felt really stupid I started to think about certain actions I did in my life and I I felt like, why the fuck would you do that? Why do you smoke weed if you know it makes you dumb? Why do you eat meat if, it know, if you know it makes you lethargic, energyless and lazy? Why did you not talk to this person when you had the chance? You might really have gotten into an interesting conversation. Why didn't you do that? So I got confronted with my own stupidity and my own personal problems. The most beautiful thing about this higher state of consciousness was that I was able to evaluate my current situation in the most profound and clear way than ever before. And this really was a strange phenomenon because I sat down with my eyes closed and I was able to use the mind like never before. So I'm working on my website currently and Instagram and this YouTube channel. And I also put a lot of time into developing myself and this can be quite challenging for a beginner like me. But in this higher state of consciousness, I was able to develop new ideas like and I was able to grab ideas and things that I had in my mind and put them into like boxes and categorize, categorize, I was able to put them in a category. So I had these boxes which I was able to uh, put certain ideas in and concepts and then I was able to tie them all together so that I could make very well constructed plans for the future. It felt like opening up the game menu of a certain game that you like and then go to the inventory, grab a certain item, grab another item, put them together, create a new item and you are able to see this menu very clearly in front of you. I was able to metaphorically experience the main menu of my own game. I must say that I saw a lot of imperfections about myself and the main one that was really in my way was I am not able to maintain my focus on a certain point for a long period of time so my folk I saw my focus shift from this to there and from this to there and then I realized hey this also happens in my regular day life how long am I able to maintain my focus on a certain point 
So I thought, ah, oh, shit, I really need to work on that. Otherwise, this will maintain for the rest of my life and it will always be a blockage for the rest of my life. And I don't want that. But the thing now is, because I felt so good and because I was in a state of higher consciousness, I knew that I was able to perfectualize my focus so that I could train it in such a way that um, it would improve every day. This realization that I don't have a good focus was a really big motivator for me to train my focus the next day and the day after that and the day after that. So this experience gave me lots of insights and things I need to work on. Now, the second part of the video. How can this go wrong? And how do I prepare myself to obtain such an experience? First of all, note that it doesn't work like you take a substance and it brings you into a higher consciousness. No, you need to do the proper research and preparations before you do that. Be wise enough and know yourself good enough to go into such a state because otherwise it will do the exact opposite. It will downgrade you. It will hurt you in very bad ways you cannot even imagine possible yet. That's why I recommend writing down the following points that I'm going to address to you right now so that you can check everything and make sure that you are ready to go into such an experience if you are going to do it. And if you are hesitating, if you are ready for this, don't do it. Just don't take the risk, man. If you don't have any experience with meditation, with spirituality or, spy or psychology, then the chances of reaching a higher state of consciousness for you are very small because you simply lack the necessary information to understand the experience you just had. Otherwise, it will be just a f maybe a fun or bad experience. And even if it is a good experience, you won't understand what happened because you don't understand this. To prepare your body for this experience, I recommend a week before you take your trip, during the whole week, you eat very healthy. Eat veggies, eat nuts, eat fruits, eat fish instead of meat, because this is a lot easier to handle for your digestive system and your body will be at ease the whole week. You will have lots of energy, you will be in a better mood, and you will feel less lethargic and less lazy when you enter your trip. And thus by eating healthy for a whole week, you are more likely to have a good experience. Get your environment just right. Do this at home, but don't do it with any friends, because otherwise you will put your attention from yourself to these friends, you will talk to them, which will distract you from doing inner work. So make sure you are comfortable enough to do this alone. Make sure that you are comfortable enough to be alone in such an experience. Also get rid of anything you could potentially harm yourself with, like knives, like lighters or handguns, if you have those laying in your room randomly, get rid of those. Have a positive mindset and affections. And with affections, I mean, have positive feelings and emotions within yourself as you are going into the trip. Make sure you step into the trip with a positive mindset. Make sure you step into the trip with positive emotions and feelings. This might be one of the most important ones on the list because you can potentially harm yourself with your own mind if your mind is not a pleasant place to be in. You could potentially harm yourself if your emotions and your feelings are not positive. They can be very destructive. Make sure you don't have any relationship problems. Make sure that the next day you don't have an important presentation to give at work. Because these things will only negatively influence your trip and they will distract you from doing inner work whilst you trip. Take a high dose but not an heroic dose. If you are going to use mushrooms or truffles, I'll put the link in the description that takes to a website which will calculate how much mushrooms or truffles you will need to take to achieve a high dose. You want a challenging dose, but not too challenging because then it will take away uh, a lot of clarity. So you won't be able to look at your psyche in a very clear way. Next thing. Make sure that you are off work the next day. If you are going to take magic mushrooms, I recommend 
taking them at around 7 o'clock in the evening because then the effects of the trip will be almost all wiped out uh, at around uh, 12 o'clock at midnight. So then after 12 o'clock you will be able to integrate all of the whole experience. You will be able to evaluate what you just experienced and you can write things down that you think are important and you should remember. If you're going to take uh, shrooms at midnight then the experience will be over at maybe 5 a.m. And then after that you will need to integrate all of that information. And unless you are a night animal, I don't recommend doing this because this will uh, mess with your rhythm. The reason why your schedule should be free the next day is because this experience can be pretty intense. And maybe you need the next day to integrate the whole experience and all of the new insight you've got. So make sure you are the day off after you trip. So that's it for the preparation. Those are all of the things that from my perception are the most important to keep in mind or to uh, check off your list before you take a trip because this will significantly influence the outcome of your trip. And now time for the final part of the video. Now I will actually explain to you how to get in this higher state of consciousness. To be honest, if you've done all of the preparations I've just announced, if you've done uh, the proper research on your psychology, if you've done spiritual work and combined all of those things with meditation practices, then the higher state of consciousness will come automatically. Of course, you will never be guaranteed a good trip. It is just really a gamble you are doing. I guess it depends on how good you know yourself, but I, I can't say for sure because I don't know what the exact factor is of achieving a higher state of consciousness using psychedelics, I, I don't know. So keep in mind that whichever substance it is that you are considering to use, you will never be guaranteed a good outcome. So know the risks and awards and know yourself, most importantly, when you are going to trip. So stay safe, stay trippy, and I'll see you next time.